Hey everybody, it's your favorite lovable wolf pilot checking in from Fox 69. I'm here in the hangar and in the background, look at over there, yeah, if I can point right, we have Uncle Steve. And anyway, we're still continuing to work on 44 Tango. Uh, today is Saturday, April, what is today? April the 30th, yeah. And uh, anyway, so, there's Steve, yeah. and he got all the push rod tubes, the STC push rod push rod tube replacements installed. So we're ready to go go on with mufflers. Well, we did the intake modules. We did put the intake back on. Yep. And torque down the screws. Now and then the uh, next thing I'm going on is the muffler. We got the mufflers nice and clean. Yep. We got those buffed off. Scotch God, bike. guys, those guys. These. I can't tell you how smooth this is. This is like a baby's butt. I mean, this is incredible. And so... And then uh, we'll put the probes in after we get the muffler. Well, we'll probably put the probes in first, then the mufflers, and then then the wiring harness back in. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, and I cleaned up the uh, auxiliary case face. Guys, you, you got to see this, folks. So this, this the back, the back of this OLG 300 engine, you can see we got gears and stuff exposed. So this is all just cleaned and. That looks just about like the uh, jug on the other side. Too. I can point it out with the light, so if they can see that. And there's your main uh, crank gear, your crankshaft. And then here is your cam gear. And you remember you have the two little marks when you put it back together and then you safety wire these in. Yep. And then uh, your mags, your mags go in here. So they drive off of uh, this gear and this gear and your starter comes in and drives off this gear. And then down here at the bottom is where your, uh, your oil screens are. But so that's this your sump. And, uh, down here this is a uh, once you put the accessory kit cover on there's an adapter on that that adapts over there to this guy which is the remote spin on oil filter and it yeah. uses these hoses uses the, the hoses with an fittings on there because back in the day in 1962 you didn't have a spin on oil filter you just had a, a metal screen back no, there you, you had a I had a fine screen here and a gross screen here and that's all you all you had and then you changed your oil every 25 hours now with the remote filter you can change your oil up to 50 hours so it doubled it yeah so it, it doubled it and, and and it made it a little bit better so that that's pretty good if you have a for just a sidelight if you ever have a a sudden stoppage of your prop like you went in with a gear up or something like that you have to take the engine down and check these nuts to uh, uh, to make sure they didn't shear uh, because the prop got suddenly stopped. So if you, if you have a prop stoppage, even though you didn't do any damage to anything, you still got to take the engine down to this point and check those items. And I mean, now if, if that ever happens, it'll be a lot easier because we're going on with, we're doing the plain power alternator upgrade, getting rid of the big heavy beefcake generator and giving us uh, some more am uh, current capability so the charging system will be running at a lower duty cycle um because if we're only pull for flying along vfr during the day we don't really don't have much lights on or anything and just calm nav gps and and whatever i mean we're not going to be pulling more than seven amps six amps and this guy gets changed out yep we gotta say goodbye to that regulator but that regulator is still good there's somebody who probably has no, an old mechanical that, that regulator. that is a solid state regulator this is good stuff and it, there's not there's absolutely nothing wrong with it uh, we thought there was initially and if you go back to one of my prior videos yeah. i was i was doing a pre-flight i was about to go to oh fly to go get brian turner that's what it was and i got in here and i said man i sure hope this regulator doesn't give me problems i touched all the wires and i think it was the battery wire I mean, I was wiggling it loosey goosey all over the place, going, "Well, hell, that's the problem." <laughs> so, tighten that up, and we hit it with the proper Loctite. But all that's coming off. Um, this, this, this is a wire. This is the rated for the generator. It's this little scrawny sucker is not going to be big enough for the alternator, and we're gonna have to do some new custom wiring for that. Um, 
Where's the big generator wire? So this is, so right here. No, the big generator wire. This is the big generator wire. Mm, okay. And that goes up here to the to the gen to, or uh, armature terminal of, of the regulator. Then there's a battery terminal here that goes into the into the firewall. And I assume that that goes down to the bus bar because then you have another it goes wire. Goes through the amp meter to the bus bar. Yeah, so through the shunt. Yeah, through the voltage sh or the amp shunt. That's probably not even saying it right. And this guy right here goes over. This is your starter solenoid. But on this side of the starter solenoid, get close up on that. On this side of the starter solenoid, it's more like a, a terminal, a binding post where a bunch of stuff that needs 12 volts uh, can land for power. So, um, got a couple other little wires here that go and do different things, which we'll have to figure that out. There's gonna be some, some fabrication and some rerouting here as part of this upgrade and trying to figure out um, where we're gonna put the 50 amp breakers a lot bigger than the clicks on the little smaller form factor breakers. So we gotta figure that out. But uh, folks, we got all kinds of stuff 4-4 Tango is uh, getting getting some uh, AV30s going on here. So we'll be able to get rid, unload a bunch of heavy, clunky mechanical instruments that don't really work very well. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me unbox the hotness. Okay, before, okay, this, okay, then before I even start, first I gotta show you old and busted, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, do about 20 rips of these a day. You're gonna have, you'll be buff. This is this is the old Delco Delco alter or generator. I was pulling it all in there. Car from the 40s. God, this thing weighs a friggin' this thing weighs a ton. It's incredible. Now we have. See now, I just showed you old and busted. Now let's show you new hotness. Oh look, the thing is so light. Oh look at this. It's got the gear on it and everything. And three. I don't know what the nuts, oh, and the three nuts are on there, okay. okay. Wow, look at this. Oh, and there we go. Now we got, that's the upgraded, I mean, look at that regulator, that there's nothing to it. I mean, it's, it's as though it's, oh, it's, oh, look, it's so cute. Oh, it's just cute. It's just so cute. So folks, what you're looking at here, you've seen this in prior videos, the starter, this is where the starter mounts, right here on these two deals. And then this is the part that sticks into the accessory cover, which I can't show you because it's not here at the moment. And then this gear, earlier in this video, you saw where that matches up to uh, the gear on, it's actually the camshaft the cam. gear mm -hmm. on, on the engine. So this is all stuff you should know. If you own an airplane, you should know every nut, bolt, washer, fuse, breaker, you need to, you should have a, a, an in-depth knowledge of your airplanes so if you're flying along and i'll reference uh my friend raul if uh flying dirty uh, he gets a shout out shout out to flying dirty he just did a video had an emergency uh in his cherokee six i'll probably get flamed for that in the comments if i, I pull it top of my head it's getting close to lunchtime not hitting on all cylinders anyway his friction his throttle friction froze up on his throttle cable. So he's jamming along at full power and he had to not do a total spoiler, but he had to do some stuff and and get control of his emotions and finally find found a Leatherman in his emergency toolkit, which everyone should also have in their airplane, especially if you're flying cross country. And I'll do a video on a perfect toolkit at some point and I'm gonna uh, collaborate with a couple A and P's on stuff that you uh, probably will need. But uh, he had to finally got the friction undone, and so he could reduce his his power level and he could do a safe landing. But it was it was hairy for just but, a minute. But here's some trivia: on a car, when your linkage to your carburetor breaks, it goes to the off position, so you can coast to the side of the road and get out. That's right. On an airplane, if your linkage to your carburetor breaks, there's a spring in the airplane carburetor that drives it to full power. So if that breaks, at least you've got power to get yourself to the ground, then you can pull on the uh, mixture and shut the engine off and land. That's correct. And that's one of the landing techniques. If you are stuck at full power coming into an airport with your airplane, uh, it, 
you know, you, there's nothing. If you have the right runway, you got, you're in a Cessna 172 type aircraft, you got your 5,000, 7,000 feet, you're going to be fine. You just, just flat, do a flap zero landing, come in, you'll be hot, 90, 95 knots. As soon as you cross the, th you know, you get, I mean, you got to kind of gauge it as you get close, right up to the threshold, start backing out your mix and your engine start running rough and rough and rough. It'll start losing power and get into your ground effect and then at that point you're going to really be pulling it back and hell you might just kill the engine but you're over the runway you're in ground effect you're fast enough you should be good to go and then just get it stopped and tell tower hey tower i had a throw of uh, you know and you should have already declared emergency at this point and they'll send a tug out or, or some guys to come push you off the, off the runway you shouldn't be stressing about that or wondering how much trouble you're going to get into so anyway uh that's what's going on uh, also today, uh, Wolf Pilot's doing some plumbing. Um, last weekend, I got the toilet flushing. And uh, this weekend, I want to uh, see if I can't make the sink work. Hey, we're back. Now we're putting the muffler on the left-hand side of the engine. This should be fun. See, this one doesn't like to line up. This one first, then try to put that one. This curved one is the one we always. It was this one. Oh, it's good. Oh. Just gentle torque. Gentle torque. Gentle torque. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> These go all the way up. This one doesn't go all the way up. It's the same with that other one over there. This center one is down just a little bit. Do anything about it, but I guess we could have lubricated it. So, so we want to start with this end. Let's start with this one. Okay. Start with the obvious. Now, on that side, I had, I had. You had the nut on pool. the smooth side, didn't you? Yes, I did. But I said that also the nuts were going. Uh, so I like them to go this way. But well, the, on the other side, they're facing towards the prop. I know. Well, okay. So, nuts towards the firewall. Good tools, things always go faster. What are we missing? An oh, we got we're good. So you had the smooth side on the right. Now he's supposed to be working on today, so I'm going to go over there. Plainer than. Yeah, he does. Folks, that is one muffler on one GO300 engine. Oh, that's a different size fastener. Well, oh, wow, they're not 3.8s. I thought that was. Three oh, that's because I probably used 7.16s. Oh, it's going to be using the 5 sixteenths. Yes, Jay. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, indeed. All right, 3 eighths. Where the hell is 3 eighths? Once upon a time, there was a 3 eighths. I have no idea. Let's see. 
It always is. Missing socket? Oh yeah, it's right here with the face. Clamp. Yep, I'm familiar with those. Uh, are you? Yep. Okay. You squeeze those things together and it just ratchets and clicks in place. Yep, just like that. Two uh, clicks and she's done. Yeah. Well, I left one on just for the fun of it. That's what used to be on everything. And passion! Boy, they charge a fortune for those too. Now, where'd you ever see them? The big pile of them over here on top of the tool shelf. No, no, I mean, where'd you ever see them other than here? Mm, no, just here. Okay. Gotta remember, Steve, my AMP training yeah. starts right here in this hangar number three at Fox 69. Okay. This is where it all began. Now, look at this old clamp. Look at this monster. This is a different kind, too. Oh, wow. Where's my, where's my oh, screwdriver? Screwdriver, because I think I'm going to have to use it on this one. All right. I gotta get through the wire. Let me see how the refrigerator works. Fridge is over there. This is a moment, folks. Uncle Steve gets to partake of the galley. Yeah. Got the. Oh, man. It's a new one? Pretty much. Oh, you got beer and water? Oh, it's nice. <laughs> I mean, I'm just all about making this place cozy. You know, how'd we got a toilet. You get, got... How'd you get power to it? Oh, oh we need an extension cord. Uh, my project for today, I am going to get that electrical outlet lit up today. That's it's on the list, and we'll get that. And I'll, I'll land land this uh, flex in here. I've got some um, half arcs. I can screw this down here and route this cable nice and clean across here, support it, and it'll be mostly correct. Is there any? There's wire in that cable, isn't it? Yes, there is. This this. This cable is called BX. It's an armored cable. So I'll just, I got the hardware in the back of the excursion to land it and I'll knock out one of these holes and land it on one of the back of these plugs. And, and then I can, this, this cord was, was plugged into the lawn tractor. Yep. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so we got plenty of room here for uh, more shelves. More shelves. Uh, 40, 45 bucks? Yeah, I found it on Facebook. Uh, I, I wish it had the fourth shelf. I don't know what happened to it, but. Folks, as you can see, we are. I blew getting... these out with uh, brake cleaner. Okay. On the cigarette. The cigarette and the, and the socket, and I retorked the plug. Not retorked it, make sure it was torqued. That's a good idea. Because I couldn't remember whether I took these out or not. I don't think I took them out, but they're all torqued. So, folks, we've got some scat plumbing connected. Got uh, all the spark plug hangers, but actually modified this one, made it a little bit shorter. I actually probably could have made it a smidge, half an inch longer to keep it you know, in a line here, but anyway, whatever. It is what it is. Let's get this stuff. Get to the fun part of the wiring here eventually, but mufflers are on. Kind of working on the other hanger project at the same time, getting 
plumbing going back here. I don't have everything I need to get the uh, high pressure manifold that feeds the toilet, the sink, and I, I gotta buy a valve to fit in that hole to run the garden hose and I can hang the garden hose stuff up here. Got the sink screwed to the wall. Got two screws there so this bad boy's not going anywhere. Mr. Toilet, he's flushing, looking good. The other project on today's schedule got this electrical outlet over here and I need to wire it with BX cable over to this mess of electrical stuff over here so after we get done with that we come over here to the flammable liquids container cabinet yes we have refreshments good times good times the hangar it's not always about flying sometimes it's about toilets well folks it's beer 30 it's time to wrap up everything in the hangar um got final stuff done on the engine spark plugs all in, uh, installed and torqued plug plug wires torqued um what else we got done here mufflers uh, we still got to figure out the wiring for the generator alternator um i had my little side project Got ran some uh, AC power here. We're using BX cable over to our beer fridge, terminated into a duplex receptacle. And make a parting shot here. Something that shows you how little the engine is. <laughs> that that's the power plant right there. And the big old space is just. <laughs> all auxiliary parts and it looks like there's a lot of room to work on until you put all the stuff in there and then there's nothing left <laughs> and there, there there's the carve out for the generator that, that notch down there is for the generator yep and we the alternator goes on that won't even there'll be just vacant space the alternator that's good so then you could get in here and actually put air uh, in carbon the dioxide truck. right well argon not, not, nitrogen. nitrogen nitrogen that's it for today uh tomorrow we'll be back uh probably got the accessory cover we got went and picked up from the machine shop it's done um let's see here uh yeah it wraps up today i'm uh, hopefully i'll go live with this uh, i've got a couple of videos in the editor i keep jumping between videos trying to get them finished up and get them get them dropped out there but uh including a video i want to talk about uh trent palmer and doing maybe a uh trevor jacob video and faa and all this stuff i'm working on a story behind the scenes on that uh make my debut maybe see if i can't let's make a run for 2,000 subscribers by christmas how about that that'd be cool anyway folks uh it's been a great day I got some footage here and a little bit of footage of us working. The rest of us we're, time, we're just sitting there swearing. We got to check out the fridge. Got Uncle Steve saying uh, sayonara, finishing up my beer, and I'm going to hit the road. So we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>